I'm going to get found out, hurt, left. I'm going to die or lose control. And then we react. A lot of these reactions come from our senses. They're stored in that primitive part of our brain that's all about survival, the fight, the flight, the freeze. What subtly comes up most of the times when we react is old, really old, childhood old, infancy old, but it's stored up in our nervous system. And again, that's why we barely even notice the reaction until boom, something blows up on us. Okay. And most of our reactions, if we could just boil it down to the basic core primitive thing going on in our nervous system, if we could, if we could put words to it, the words would probably be one of the following. I'm going to get found out. I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get left, abandoned. I'm going to die. I'm going to lose control. I'm going to get found out, hurt, left. I'm going to die or lose control. And then we react. Because those, especially when we were tiny children, infants, those were scary things. And now that's wired into our nervous system. So basically, fear and excitement are the same neurological responses in our body. But when you're excited, you actually keep breathing and, and you're happy. When, when, you're, when you're afraid, you quit breathing, hunch over, go into to your reactions. So we can have reactions to good things. This can be our upper limiting, our self-limiting beliefs. When things are going great, they're going well, they're going beyond belief good. But guess what? It still triggers those old beliefs. I'm going to get found out. I'm going to get hurt. I'm going to get left. I'm going to die. I'm going to lose control. Even the good stuff triggers those reactions deep inside. Okay, so we have to learn to pay attention to these triggers, to our common body reactions, our feelings, our common thought processes. Thought processes. So pay attention to the way you react. Do you worry? Do you run? Do you hide? Do you lash out? Do you obsess? Do you ruminate? Do you get entertaining and funny? Uh, do you try to fix things? Do you try to make everything better? Do you defend yourself? Do you yell? Do you cry? Do you drink? Do you drug? Do you jerk off? All right? What do you do when you are triggered? And notice that most of these things happen before you even get conscious of the fact that you were triggered. I love to give this example. Many of you have heard it. Ten years ago, I didn't even know this woman. Now, this short little woman living in Mexico gets a downturned mouth, and I go, I go nuts. She just can get that look on her face. She'll throw her sunglasses into her purse, throw her keys into her purse, right? She's triggered, all right? But guess what? I get triggered. It's like, would you get that look on her face? It's like, I'm going to die. I mean, it's really old. It's like, I'm going to die. So this panic or fear comes in. I react. But what I do is I go into my superpower. My superpower is I can talk her down. I can talk her through. I can talk her over it. I can get her off the ledge. I can get her back to good. When my superpowers don't work, but she's just going to double down on it, that triggers a, another trigger in me. I react. I yell, I attack, I've thrown things before, I say hurtful things. And then when that's all said and done, you know, I would withdraw, I'll go, I'll pout, I'll have a pity party, I'll plan my exit from the relationship. And then after a little bit of that, I go back and try to make it better and, get, and see if I, oh, can we get it back to good now? You know, and then repeat that. You know, this is an Einstein's version of insanity. What is? I'm going to get found out hurt, left, I'm going to die or lose control. And then we react. One way to shift that, I ask myself, is my woman feeling sufficiently safe with me right now? Is my woman feeling sufficiently connected to me right now? Is my woman feeling sufficiently loved by me right now? Just those three things. Safe, connected, loved. And is there anything that I might be able to do to improve on those three things for her. That's curious, right? Getting curious about it. Now I have to be grounded and breathing and open and loving to be even ask those questions. And, but that's one way to shift that.